the I Overwatch Kings, Twitch but these too. guys were. Well, I used to watch it all the time, actually. Okay. The Nexon Cups as well. Okay. I was gonna go pro and Dirty Bomb, and then I realized I was shocking. But that's fine. Anyway, so these guys, these guys played against each other plenty. Yep. Uh, so, I mean, maybe in a slightly different permutation, but talking about Overwatch Kings, these guys go back to, like, ET days, right? Like, okay. old school kind of stuff, whereas, obviously, Creation is heavily uh, Team Fortress-based, obviously, a little bit of Dirty Bomb there as well, Shoot Mania and some guys, but they have played before, which is the exciting part. So, there's some history, that's what we like here, of course, getting into a grand final like this one. 150 yep. euros on the line. Yep. And just to remind you guys how the format works, there's four weeklies in a month, and, of course, we're going to have a monthly final into the next month. That will be for the last month, where it's nine. 100 euros in prize pool, 600 for first, 300 for second, and that's going to be it. And then you can win a little bit extra money, not to mention you get a lot of extra practice that maybe you need in here. And we're going to find out which team is going to be crowned our first to go for Overwatch winner. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So we had, did have to wait a little bit, of course, because we had another game going. And for those wondering, we couldn't cast it because it was A, underway, B, it was full of spectator slots. We didn't have any open. Uh, because we didn't see the need to uh, reserve slots in a game that we weren't supposed to be casting. But what happens when you have 368 teams? Well, you get a little bit of uh, a uneven progress. And you get a little bit bracket. of us doing a vlog at Take TV. <laughs> yeah, great interviews those were. <laughs> I thought there was a fantastic... Blizzard loves that stuff. You guys are crazy. I don't know you're talking about the cringe. And then you saw the interview with uh, Tavik that we did before. That was a long time ago, actually. But yeah. we're actually in the game. It's going to be Lijong Towers, our first map. Second will be Nepal. Gibraltar will be third. Route 66 will be fourth. And if we do need it, we'll be going on to Alien as our fifth and final map. Let's see now as well. I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to starting off with a, a King of the Hill map. I generally think the creation of shown tonight that they're pretty darn good uh, on that one, especially in the early game against Graviton Surge. So I have full faith in uh, those guys here, but Overwatch Kings have been... They've been making waves. They won our Launch Cup, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Overwatch Kings have as well. So they've been putting in the hours. I mean, they've been putting in the work. They've been playing a lot of Overwatch recently. To be, fair to, to be fair to everyone else, and unfortunately not fair to them, there weren't like the big dogs in Europe signed up for that one because they were all at Take TV. And Reunited didn't participate. So to be fair to them and everyone else out there, they actually, yeah, they won, but there wasn't the top of the top teams. And Creation is definitely up there on the top. So if they want to win, they're going to have to beat a team that's already proven themselves on land. Yeah. Exactly right, but they're looking good online Overwatch Kings so far, so let's jump in now as well. It is going to be uh, the Night Garden, or the main tower, uh, at least part of this one now as well. It's going to be a big fight to start with as well. Team that wins out on this one definitely has a big advantage here, and we'll notice the two Lucios here coming out for Creation Esports. That's a pretty important thing to be noting early on. Yeah, Bromas. Oh, I might have had a mistake here. There's no kill feed. I actually turned that one off. That's my bad, but either way, Bromas is doing some good damage. On his, uh, on his Zarya. Oh, that makes me look like I did it now. This is Jason. We can go back and I can fix if you want. Yeah. Okay. Good thing I know the button. We need that stuff. We need that stuff working, so. That's fine. All right, my bad. First time doing this, um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because you were the uh, lobby admin as well, weren't you? Yeah, I was. Um, so, kill feed's on. Kill cam's off. Kill feed's on. I can see, show camera. No, show this. I want people to see. Kill feed is actually go in, go in. All right, look, look. Kill feed. Oh, <sighs> I'm so glad you made us show you that. All right. Oh god. We good boys. So glorious. Disable right. cool cam. We're good. It's, I swear I read it as the other way around. Um. Anyways, we're going back in. We're good. Sure <clears> let's just cut that, that one out. Strike it out. And let's just enjoy the sweet <sighs> sounds of Lijong Tower. Nice troll, Jason. Are they on? Oh, they're on the other sides now. Ha-ha! I have my overlay ready for that. Okay, so this time around, guys, don't get too confused. Creation Esports is going to be on the red side. Overwatch Kings is going to be on the blue side. You can't blame me for that. That's unbelievable. I blame you for it. I didn't do anything. Let's do, uh, exactly, yeah, again. you didn't do anything. So double Lucio here for Creation Esports, something that Overwatch Kings aren't really going for. They're actually bringing, interestingly enough, the Symmetra into play here. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, I don't think they're actually playing Symmetra. Uh, the, oh god, uh, do you really call that? Zenyatta. We're off to a great start. You've tilted um, me, I've tilted you. <laughs> Just freaking Zenyatta. I tilted you and you've tilted you. Yeah. Um, Atatonian, I don't know if he's actually going to play that, though. Um, well, they didn't have double Lucio last time, so it better I be mean, a yeah, mercy they, then, right? They kind of saw the comp they're going up against, but you can already expect what you're going to go up against anyways. Um, it's not necessarily a bad pickup, but I don't know if there's something he really wants to Did He actually did go this before, didn't he? Oh, well, at least there wasn't double Lucio, so unless he was yeah, playing Mercy before. I think before, he did have it yeah. before. But it's, it's really, it's really, uh, it's really questionable. It's a little bit difficult if you're not prepared to work with it. But either way, Haruto kicking off the first map in this grand final. It's a best of five. Winner will take home 150 euros, and loser will take home nothing. 
All right, let's see how this Zenyatta actually does work out. I guess there's no Widows to pick him off, so that is something. But uh, I just felt they are going to fall down fairly early on the piece here. And Artie forced to just backtrack as he does fan the hammer. Draki has got both of those kills, actually, ultimately. And those Lucios are pretty darn strong on the bridge. Link, come on, man. The one time I want to spec the guy. I just got a headache from that, like, instantaneously. Anyways, you do see the control point can be picked up for the the attacking side or whatever. Creation Esports, the red side, I guess, is the best way to talk about it. And I just felt, well, with Olba already going down as you try to push in towards the actual point, they're going to need to group up here and go in together. It's a little bit difficult, though, without a Reinhardt shield to be protected from, but they're running double Zarya now. Yeah, so going away from the Zenyatta, maybe it was a snowball idea if they control the point. Maybe it's going to be that much easier to hold if they had kept the Zenyatta. But double Zarya, double Graviton Surge potential, double shields also, quite importantly, if your team is going to do a lot of brawling out here. But the sound barrier comes down and Artia inches forward. He manages to catch on towards Rib there, at least with that Deadeye. Mishra and Icefell are trying to fight back here as well, using the side rooms and plenty of Zarya shields to keep their team alive. And so far, so good. And Atonian switching over. Seems to have made a little bit of a difference here, but now he's going to deal with Bromas, who's backing up. He's going to Fall. Graviton Surge is available for Adatonian if he does need it. Yeah, they're basically just grouping up, so all the AoE damage can just do a lot of work here. The Graviton Surge is not going to be used just yet, but it looks like the point will be taken for Overwatch King. So Icefell, Adatonian, Meecher, and Oba, all with ultimates available. Oba actually using his right off the bat, and won't actually get... Actually, no, did get your case, I believe. But if anything, he did hold them back and force them away from this point for now. So we do have three tanks here. Double Zaya and a Winston for Overwatch Kings. So that's going to make them rather durable in terms of their lineup here. And they do hold the point right now as well. They have pole position, as it were. But Creation oh. could be a little bit, bit of big ult coming out for Icefell. But the shield's in his way. Completely shut him down. He's got one point of health. He's going to heal up. But no Deadeye going off. And not really working out too well. The ground just starts coming through. Link's just trying to get in and do some damage. He only gets the right click onto one before he does go down. But the rest of the team is going to be there to hold them back. Adetonian is just going off. He's picked up three kills in that fight. And that is going to be a successful hold here. 30% build up for the defending side for Overwatch Kings. And 52% sitting on for Creation. A team that has starting to be noticed online, Overwatch Kings as well. Obviously with history in previous games like many of these teams, but now Graviton Surge is available for them here as well. We'll have to see how cleverly they use him at this moment to try and clump creation up, but unfortunately Rib goes down. He was the one who actually had an ultimate ready to go. Olba picked off as well on the backside as Lynx and Arty now starting to activate. Those two McCrees for creation really starting to connect those shots. And here with the finish of Misha by Numlocked on the point, creation can hold and recapture. Naruto here, most importantly, staying alive there too. Not actually dying in that fight. Was able to just get around the side, pick up a little bit of a, a little bit of a health pack. While the rest of his team does try to go for the push back in, or at least to hold them off. RYB. Is it going to push back into this quarter? I mean, it's very close quarters. They're very grouped up if these enemy teams there, which allows for a lot of right-click damage out of Azaria, especially if you're able to get your percent up. And without Antonian back at base, there's just no real chance the double Zarya comp is going to work out, and that will be another successful hold. And Twitty could have used his Primer Age at that point, but there was no one else really to follow up on the disruption that he would have caused. So he opts to just hold on to it and wait for the next spawn in and make this next retake attempt just that much stronger there. So Creation have control. They have a Graviton Surge and a Primer Rage of their own to be using here. And we're going to hear a Deadeye being channeled there as well by Linksa up inside that building. Atatonian trying to stop him, but oh! Linksa won't be stopped. That's a huge ult from that man as well. And uh, a bit of teabag action That's on it. that side. That should be it. And then it's going to be the first round go to creation. That's almost certainly going to be the play of the game too. It's going to have to be there. But let's see as we do go into the next round. What's going to be on? Oh, okay, so the first point. Looks like teams will stay on the respective sides here. But Linksa and, uh, and Art here. I mean, Linksa we saw do a really, really good Genji. We saw him do a really amazing Widowmaker when we're back at the Take TV tournament playing against Rogue in the final. But he seems to be just settling here at this McCree role, this McCree position for his team. Where Bromas was previously on that. Oh, it's overwatchkings.com. That's my bad, that one. That actually is my bad. Fix that one up. Anyways, here we go. Numlock going to be leading the charge for Haitian Swords to go back towards this point. And they will actually get straight in, actually. Trying to get around the backside here. Numlock trying to look for maybe a support to pick up or two. And I felt it's going to be there to help out as he's pushing straight ahead. Looking for Jacase. He will get the kill onto him. And looking for more. He's just right clicking away. Flashbangs in. He doesn't connect. And eventually he will fall. But the damage has still been done. And Creation are looking for that retake here. Adetonian and Mitra, I think the last two men alive on this point, is about to unlock. And it's just going to spell death for them. They're just trying to build up as much Oprah Sun as they can before they die. And they will eventually fall here. So, good pick up here to creation. They do get the initial hold, but we'll see how long they can last. 
Yeah, Artie are close to uh, another Deadeye, as is Lynx are here as well. So those two McCrees for creation going to be dangerous, especially if we see Bromas charge in to another Graviton Surge in the next few moments now, of course. Still doubles Arya coming out for Overwatch Kings. Uh, I'll have to see if that really works out in practice here, as it had a few moments, but sometimes, I guess, extra Graviton Surge doesn't exactly mean extra win possibility now, as Lynxer has himself a nice little vantage point from range, just getting those long-range shots here as well. Pretty impressive aim from this man as well. He can do it from so far away. He did have Deadeye ready to go. May have bitten off more than he can chew here. He's going to have to duel out with his Zarya, but does get the headshot straight in there as well. Taking them very, very low. But here comes a sound barrier for Overwatch Kings, and it's going to be out of Tony going in with the Graviton Surge. And Lynx is just being chased away, so there's no real chance of him being able to even help his team in this one. He will be forced to just back away, wait for his team to regroup up, just exactly like we saw on the first point. I did get similar percent on top of that. Uh, and it looks like Icefelt has actually left the game. It looks like he did disconnect, but per the rules, it's already been a minute of time. There won't be a remake. That's right, so they're going to have to go with just the five right now. That's the way it goes. No pause function in the game really? yet. And That's, there's the McCree's. You're casting, Weston. You should know there's no pause feature in this game. And this should be just a clean sweep out of creation. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Blizzard, please. I'm sure it's on the horizon. But right now, we play on as per the rules here. So creation get themselves, well, the advantage here as well. I don't really know if they needed any more of an advantage, Jason, but they'll... Gonna have to take it one way or another now as well. Another Graviton Surge being used, and Art here off towards the side. Managed to cut down Olba, who was trying to use his Deadeye to interrupt that fight. And now Bromas going forward quite aggressively here as well. This is Overwatch Kings really now starting to flex their muscles. No pun intended. Uh, that's pretty much just gonna be the game too, I think. I think, you know, Overwatch Kings are just gonna be disheartened at this point, and that means we'll have a little bit of a delay into the next map. That's 71% for creation, and there still is obviously a chance for Overwatch Kings, but... I don't want to build it up to something that it isn't going to be at this rate. Sure. As Oba's just going to try to lead the charge here with the shields coming in. Deadeye going to be coming in out of Artier. And he won't really have a chance to connect on to anyone as now even Linkster's going to be channeling his. But again, the shield placements out of both teams have been very spot on. And Linkster does secure himself two kills before going back to the point. So these McCree's definitely uh, making their presence felt here as well. Artier and Linkster, what better duo to have here in Europe? And they are making life very, very hard for OwatchKings.com. And now Linkster. Can just hook around the outside, see if there are any stragglers, but that yep. is going to be it. The first map pretty convincingly going in favor of Creation Esports there as well. Unfortunate to see Icefeld drop out at that point, Jason, but that is just the way it is. Yep. It's the way the cookie's going to crumble. So apparently they're getting a sub to play from. Adetonian actually does get to play the game. I thought it was going to go towards uh, the sextuple kill that we saw. Yeah. This is like where they all die, I thought. No, it's not. Okay, so this is a little bit different part of the fight. Yeah, that's the, we did actually remark upon that play from him as well in that moment, saying he was doing quite well. You're, you're typing out of my name, Jason. I know, you behave but they yourself. know it's me. They know it's me. They don't know it's me. They don't know it's you. <laughs> Linkser. <laughs> See, he knows it's me. That's exactly something Linkser that's, would that's say. That's why he said dot, dot, dot. Exactly. Sure. Anyway. Um, but yeah, relatively quick game for Creation Esports. Again, we talked about Overwatch Kings. Yeah, they did win the opening launch cup for YSL, but then again, the top teams in Europe weren't there because they were over at Take TV playing at the LAM. Uh, Reunited didn't bother to play in that one either, or the Take TV LAN, so yeah, you won, but you can't say you beat the best. And this is their chance to prove everyone out there that they can beat the best. Yeah, I mean, Overwatch Kings, if I'm not mistaken, it was in the Ghost Who Gamers EU Cup recently actually performed quite well as well. Um, I think if I think back through the brackets... I mean, they're not a bad team. Like, I've, I've played with Meecher and Olba plenty of times, and even uh, Twitty. But, you know, it's just... They don't really have... I'm not saying they don't have what it takes, but at the moment, the team in general needs to kind of step yeah. up, maybe work on its synergy a little bit better. But more importantly, work on counters, too. Because we saw at the Tate TV event how many teams didn't understand, like, just switching one hero to something different to counter something that they're up against would actually change the game completely. For instance, when we saw Widow and Mercy together, we would see Genji's going in 1v2 all the time. Genji's really can't win that duel 1v2. Sure. You need a Winston to go in with you to actually win that, and then you can snowball from there. But teams need to learn these little intricacies that the game does have. No doubt about it. We are ready to go, pretty much. I think Creation are ready. Overwatch Kings are ready. And yeah, I mean... You know, even teams like Northern Gaming Blue are looking quite good as well. They beat Graviton Surge in the Ghost of Gamers EU Weekly Cup. Overwatch Kings had a tough bracket. They had Anox and Reunited in the same bracket as them. So mm. it's not really an easy one to fight through. But again, I think this Overwatch Kings is definitely a team on the cusp of breaking that top six, I think, or at least they're definitely in the mix. Give yeah, them some time. Definitely. I think they'll be there. Definitely. All right, so we're dropping into Nepal now, our second map in this best of five. Our third map will be Nepal and then fourth 
sorry, third map will be Gibraltar, fourth map will be Route. If we need a fifth map, it will be Ilios. But I think uh, Creation Esports, even without that, you know, sixth man drop, without Icefelt falling out, they still proved to be, you know, the better team, especially in the first half. It's quite. Oh, <laughs> Icefelt's back. Wait, hold on. If Creation agrees, then sure. All right, let's go back. Okay, that's fine. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're just dealing with some of the issues here as well. I felt with the internet drop, I guess it was fairly quick that we saw Overwatch Kings decide to replace him, so fair enough if he but does come back. watch him crash in this game as well. Oh, God. And then they'll be like, can we restart again with uh, with Olbe in instead? Uh, going to lose it. Yeah. Hopefully it doesn't it. happen. Yeah. So, um, anyway, we're going to see now him jump back in. They should be ready to go. So, interesting enough, you actually have our first two maps of being King of the Hill ones here as well. Uh, ones that, you know... Actually, we, we have all three in this best of five. With Alias oh, really? to run off the fifth map, yeah. Interesting. So I mean, we it's the way you veto, right? Like, if you take away all the control point maps, or if you actually veto the um, the payload maps, there we go, mm -hmm. uh, you force the enemy team to veto off the control point maps, and you're left with King of the Hill. So or capture point we will map, have sorry. at least one payload map in this best of five, though, as well. If it gets the third, we'll be going to Gibraltar. If I'm not mistaken, so I yep. have uh, a good way to see this one finish out here as well. But Creation looked to be just a cut above the rest in general, actually. Yep. Even better than the, the current best team in Europe, or at least touted as the best team, IDDQDs. Or, uh, sorry, Rogue, who did have IDDQD, who left. Um, so we expect them to be pretty strong here. I don't, I don't know. I don't really think Overwatch Kings... Um, I don't know if this uh, this approach they're bringing is going to be quite enough up against. I like the creation. double Zarya at first. I mean, it's not actually a bad lineup if you can stay alive and have the energy to to work with. But if you're up against Creation, like this isn't going to work against you know a top top team. You may be right, Jason. There's only one only one way to find out here as well. As we're going to be going in towards Nepal, starting on this. This well, used to be the second, I guess, out of the three here as well. But it does, it's a little bit different to the others uh, in that it is a little bit more raised up in the middle here as well. I call it uh, sort of the platform stage. But I'm sure there's a more official name for it, Jason. Oh, it escapes me. I like it. I like platform. And, uh, yeah, we we'll see a lot of teams that try and work around from the sides. High ground's still in, an issue in this map as well. Obviously, on the left-hand side, if you're coming from uh, Overwatch Kings' perspective, there are ledges that you can drop off as well, and plenty of opportunities for Widowmaker to use the grappling hook to actually get herself airborne. And we saw how strong Linksa was on, on this map earlier on in the night as well. It was a very strong performance. Creation almost dropped the ball when it came to Sanctum, and I think the, um, the next stage as well was one out by Graviton Surge here, but Creation uh, looking a little bit too strong. A little bit too hard to topple here as well. I definitely fancy them, but we'll have to see what Overwatch Kings can bring. I want to see how is going to play this Widowmaker in the beginning. He's off to the side with some protection from a Winston if he's up against, obviously, another another Widowmaker of his own. When he gets the first headshot, gets damage amped as well. And he's just doing a lot of siege damage. Yes, he's not getting any kills, but he's assisting his team so much with these shots. Unbelievable. Yeah, he's doing a lot of damage and making it very, very easy for the rest of Creation just to walk through. You see how little damage Bromas actually had to do there as well when he finished off Olba, Olba and Misha. And that's just going to be the story of this one here as well. Numlock did fall in that take, but it was almost a complete wipe for Creation. And Links are now just lining himself up in the ideal vantage point. He might even be expecting to be challenged out here, but there's no Widow forthcoming from Overwatch Kings. And you saw him holding on to his Infosite too, because he didn't want to use it a little bit too early when they're back at spawn. Does get the first headshot. Look for the second again. Numlock picks up a kill. You know, you can just watch this guy all game, I feel like, at this rate. He's got a great vantage point, and yeah, like you said, Jason, using the Recon Visor as well, giving so much time uh, to get a bit of info on, on where Overwatch Kings are coming, and he can just wipe that one as well. It's going to be pretty much the same thing. I think from Linkser as well. He may change position, he may get a different vantage point, but the whole idea is going to be much the same. And he, already a third of his way to his next Recon Visor. Yeah, so that's what they're using Bromos to actually scout out in the beginning, since they don't have the Recon Visor up, which will allow him to heal back up before they do get into the next fight against Linkser. He's not being, like you said, he's not being challenged in this position. You need to see an enemy Widowmaker or the Winstons drop on top of him. And the Deadeye's going to be coming through, but let's see what Icefeld does here. Yeah, Icefeld coming forward as well. Uh, Self-proclaimed DPS main. He definitely loves a bit of McCree, but he gets taken down super early there as well by Artyr. Not really given a chance to fight. Speaking of the man himself, he'll eventually get cut down by Rib, but that man has no teammates left, really. Bromas now just going to be ducking away from this one, getting healed up in the meantime by Dracius. And this is creation going with actually just the one Lucio. Well, we often see them with two on these maps, but another hold here. Linksa, probably one more connected shot he'll be able to bring 
bring back that recon visor and again read completely into Overwatch Kings' approach. It's a snowball and Creation Esports are riding the wave. This is probably one of the biggest stomps I've seen actually on this map so far. And Link's just going to take down Oba, one of the tracers oh gets gosh. a connection onto the second. Yeah, they're going to hide inside their bubbles, but there's literally no one dealing with them. You finally see someone, I think that's Twitty, jump into him. He's forced just that Primal Rage just to stay alive, but he's just not being dealt with at all. That's right. I mean, obviously, we can see the Primal Rage Winston there. I think it's uh, Twitty could have knocked Linksa from his position, but really, it's not really worth it trying to go up there. You've got so many other things to worry about now as well. And with a sniper player that can support your team so well, the rest of your DPSs can just sit on the point, harass, and just get the extra damage across the line. That's all that needs to be done now. Bromas doing much the same from outside as well. That's RTA benefiting from the sound barrier. He's going to keep himself healthy and deal with Rib. Now the Dead Eye being channeled as well just to keep this overtime ticking along. He waited until Rib was outside of the radius of his shield to pick him up. And it'll be just the scraps to be cleaned here before Creation take this stage quite comfortably. Yeah, that's just a big snowball. That's what's going to happen. If I would make it get some position, boys. You need to deal with them. You need to see have a Widowmaker yourself or Winston jumping on top of them. Because if you noticed, Linkser didn't have Dracaeus with him to actually protect him. He didn't have the healing from that to keep him alive. So what happens is, if he gets jumped on by a Winston, you can land the jump actually onto that small tiny platform, which makes it so difficult. You can actually eliminate him in a 1v1 situation. So that's what's going to happen if you leave a Widowmaker like Linkser, especially probably one of the best in Europe alone. Well, that's just it as well. <laughs> he wasn't touched for most of that time and I mean it's kind of stating the obvious right if you don't deal with him he's going to keep doing damage but the fact that he can actually relocate so easily uh, is a big deal what's even more of a big deal is the fact that he didn't have to relocate at all he just stood on top of the same pole proud as heck just getting shots away here so he wasn't even challenged that's the problem I mean when Linksa has to be dynamic he can do that it's a great flanking sniper up there with timing I'd, I'd say quite easily but uh, in that case here, this wasn't pressured whatsoever, and the man is just going to go nuts. So high ground already taken by Creation first. That's just because they know this map well. They made the correct move getting up on that high ground, and Overwatch Kings didn't really challenge it. It's going to make it tough for them to win this fight here as well as Creation already can see the entirety of Overwatch Kings and know who they want to go for first. Yeah, they went for the, the complete collapse on top of them and were able to actually get control of the initial point, or should ideally be able to get control of the initial point as it does unlock. But you saw them, like they said, you play on the high ground, you drop down on top of them, you pick up the targets you want to as a priority. And from there, you pretty much snowball the fight entirely. So now, I'll watch Kings on the attack, on the uh, the downside of this so far. I need to find some sort of avenue to come back and already Icefall being taken relatively low. Numlock's actually surviving a hell of a lot of damage, switching to that primary rage form. Yeah, that's right. And um, Bromas uh, as well going to be able to get this last few shots in now. Is that Atonian trying to challenge the man aforementioned here? It's going to be tough to do when there's a shield up there as well. He's just feeding Bromas extra cannon power, which is going to come back to bite Atonian in the rear end. As Bromas getting the finish now as well as Overwatch Kings have to spawn in quickly. They need to establish control here. But they also need to wait for the whole team to be together. They're staggered out right now in spawns because oh. they're dying at different times. And Linkser is just controlling from above here in that main opening. Hitting so many shots on the high ground yet again, just showing his raw aim power that he's going to have in general on any hero. But again, the pushing from the side, Hydra's going to be coming in. There's at least one clean target, but with the shield down in front of him, he doesn't have a chance to actually get the high noon off. Yeah, that's right. He has to cancel that one as well. He still keeps 50% of it, prevents the point from being captured, but now needs to avoid the Primal Rage. Winston going to have to come back and fight perhaps another time here as well as he still gets a fan of hammer in towards him. And that's going to leave him very, very low. Twitty's trying to back away. It was Rib, in fact, who actually died. And this point will be retained by Creation Sports. So not quite there, enough. right? So he used his ultimate in that fight, was pushed out by Winston, and then he right clicks or a fan of the hammers, another Winston in Primal Rage form, gets his ult back up again, and he has it in time for this fight. I think there's a button you can use to, so we can see the player names above their heads, Jason. For some reason, they've disappeared. I don't know if you need to go into free cam and then back into uh, view. Nonetheless, we're going to see... Yep, there it is. Oh, God, good. Dead Eye being channeled there as well up on the high ground, but Numlock gets himself two quick kills. That's both McCrees to fall down. It's just an easy hole for creation, and they still have a sound barrier remaining. And that's what I mean about having two Lucios in the play. You can save them for two consecutive fights, and that's it, really. Creation can hold on to this one. M maybe if Overwatch Kings get lucky, they can tap the point, but no, over overtime's going to come in. Not even as no one was there to challenge it, and it's going to be 2-0 and zero in map score now as well. Creation showing they're just a little bit too strong on these point capture maps. Kind of an uneventful grand final so far, I have to say. I think we can both agree with. Yep. Um, hopefully, when we go into Gibraltar, we'll see a little bit more of a, uh, a closer map. Linkser. Heroes never die. I was going to say, what is that play oh of the game? But there Lord. you go. Oh, man. 
The pick on Atatonium was very sharp yep. as well. There's almost no aim correction as well. And when Wait, you jump pack kills? Yeah. So um, he let... Really? I guess. That's insane. 14 of those? I, I've seen that appear recently. I'm not sure if it's like from jumping in or if it's literally from actually landing on people with that. It's possible. Yeah. With the amount of damage that's being spread by, I guess, every other hero in the game, it's reasonable to consider that yeah. maybe you could you could get kills with that, although it seems unlikely. Hmm. Well, just to, just to let you know, I, so I did go to free cam. You could see their names, but when I went back to first person, they slowly disappeared. That's strange, isn't it? Not sure Couldn't tell you. Don't on. know what's doing that. Um... I can check the settings again, but it wouldn't actually be in the lobby yeah. settings anyways. Uh, but we're going to Gibraltar. Watchpoint Gibraltar as potentially our final map of the night in this best of five. I, I'm hoping to see more because we have Route 66 to come up. We have Ilios potentially mm. uh, as a fifth map. Um, apparently, Icefeld crashed again, so they're bringing in uh, Ox Oxy to be a permanent, a permanent sub for okay. him in this game. Um, but this is just a very strong start. This is just Creation Esports showing... I think how far ahead they are of Overwatch Kings. Even compositionally as well. We actually saw that uh, they were using fairly extensively the double Lucio. We did see at some point where Dracius was playing Mercy mm -hmm. on that first stage as well. But you can see just how strong it is brawling over that point when you have two Lucios. Yeah. We had two consecutive fights, two sound barriers available, one for each there as well. So very, very hard. You're really shutting out your opponents by I doing mean, that as well. Even on the first point of... Uh of Nepal, it wasn't even the Sambers, it wasn't the Lucy, it was literally Linkser being left alone yep. on that high ground and not being dealt with at all. He just got to sit there the entire time and that's what we talk about when we, you know, we mention the top teams and what they do differently than maybe the not top teams is finding the weaknesses, finding where where they're winning in these fights and trying to use that against them, try to at least capture on that. And in that same vein as well, I feel like the use of Mercy on these maps is more restricted to that first point take in some cases there as well. That's what Creation did. They brought the Mercy in for the first push because if you can somehow, uh, if you're still trying to get the point, having that res in your back pocket if you're still attacking the point is really good to have. But after you control it, you just want to keep your team alive and be able to fight and be able to maybe kill things like Mercy, right. be able to dive the back line. So having two Lucios in play is that much better here. But Jason, we're not far from heading in towards Gibraltar here as yeah. well, which may well be the last map of this series here if things don't get any better for Overwatch Kings. Very well could be, which again would be a little bit sad considering, you know, was it 368 teams you said signed up for this one? We yep. had 400, actually over 420 in total, but only 368 teams actually uh, like ready up in time to participate in this one. So it's good to see there's a lot of teams out there that want to play and hopefully we gave them a little bit of an avenue to actually practice some. I know a lot of teams are talking about how it's really hard for them to, to find scrims because they don't have access to certain Discord channels or whatnot, but this is definitely a way to, to help them do this. Well, let's see. We're going to have Widowmakers here for both sides. So Oxy coming in as the sub, as it were, is going to be playing that Widowmaker, potentially at least. Can't be too sure. We do know what the defensive line is bringing. So that Soldier 76 is going to be used here as well. So no double McCree. Bremas instead, obviously going for the Soldier here as well. A bit more high ground control. And we saw what uh, Soldier 76 can do on this map, especially from teams like uh, like Rogue, I yeah, guess. Rogue Tvik, in particular. Tvik, uh playing Soldier 76 is very, very hard to deal with, especially when it comes to the hangar phase as well. Love to see. I wonder if uh, Creation actually going to feel even... Even more confident, maybe overconfident at this rate with them being able to just absolutely wipe the floor with them so far. But Oxy, there's a lot of pressure on your shoulders, man. He's coming in for Icefell. He's going to be playing Widowmaker. And let's see if he's able to win out the battle against Lynx. He's already spotted him out as well, but doesn't have the, the vision on him to go for the shot. Still has a shield, though, at least to defend himself now as well. Lynx just seems to be repositioning as well. Just a little bit of a higher ground here. Not sitting right back on that rear balcony, as we do see from some teams defending, but they will concede this first point anyway. <laughs> Oxy, don't know what he was hoping for there. Maybe just a clear shot, maybe just a bit of an angle there, but now he's going to be forced back as well. We see the Reinhardt come charging on in, and it's Numlocked as one who puts the hammer down. Twitty falls pretty darn quickly, and Lynx as well takes down his opposite number. Oxy no longer around to get those shots. And with four down, Overwatch Kings have to regroup and go again. And they didn't even wait for them to get into that underpass to go for that choke point. They just said, all right, we're, we'll fight you right now. We're not too worried. We can rush straight in, catch you when you're not in position and not prepared for this. And that's exactly what they did. They're able to win that fight. Linkster playing a little bit more back, though. Actually, the entire team is playing a little bit more back. And Oxy will have a chance to better Linkster if he can just get in the right position. Oxy not really sure where he wants to be looking here. He's come a, a little bit more aggressive this time as well. Linkser, you know, justifiably, sort of giving a bit of ground here as that first checkpoint does 
invariably come up here. It's what we expect to see from Overwatch Kings of the Creation. Did go for a first fight, now a second one, and Earthshot is going to be coming down. And that's allowed Art here in the back line to do a lot of damage. He's got his third on top of that one as well, helping Numlocked with the fourth, and Bromas to clean up Oxy for the fifth. He was right at the back of that one as well, and not even Oxy able to stay safe here from Bromas than anyone else who is looking to be actively challenging out that Widowmaker, but sprinting up to those positions and, and just pushing her back. All I can think about right now is Numlocked. You play Reinhardt and basically Reinhardt only, and you don't have one of the legendary skins. Come on, bro. Really disappointed in you. Um, but yeah, Creation, I think they're just showing hands down the difference between the teams here. And, and Numlocked with a nice uh, Fire Strike does catch on to quite a few. This gives Ult percent up really, actually, really close to finishing. And Artier, a little preemptive on his ultimate, yeah. but it does force him into the server room. And Drakaeus has ult up himself, so look for that re that resurrection to be a big part of how this fight goes. Fan the Hammer's coming out to try and break that Reinhardt shield down now. His rib getting up on high, but Bromas to cut him down before he even gets there. A lot of damage available away from him now. And Lumlock being healed by that Mercy in this fight. Bromas doing so much work from up on high, and Twitty as well as Oxy are going to fall there as well. It's Lynx are just making life so damn hard for Overwatch Kings to get an even footing. And you said they were forced into the server room by this use of Deadeye by Art here, but I think that's where they should go. I don't think they should try and drop down from this overpass anymore. Too good, especially highlighted the importance of using that server room to gain control of this second checkpoint area. It's probably what we want to see a little bit more oh. from Overwatch Kings, but Lynx is not going to let him get close enough here. Look at him. Pushing forward, a flanking sniper, as I have called him before. Going to make it very, very hard for Overwatch Kings to get through on Skate, but this is a different track tact here. Earthshatter's going to come down. Let's see what they make of it. We're almost on the high ground, though. He's got his tactical visor available. Again, force him into a really rough spot. The sound barrier going to be coming in to actually give them a lot of bit, a lot of extra HP to work with. Linkster, though, he's still alive. He's still doing damage. He's not being dealt with. He's going to get a kill into Ulba, and he's going to be looking for the final kill onto Twitty. Again, it's Overwatch Kings are uh, reluctant to try and challenge out Linkser here. I mean, Oxy's already changed away from Widow. He knows he can't beat him 1v1, and even Bromas is giving him so much problems. Speaking of the man, he's in uh, a little bit of a compromising position and is eventually going to go down. But Overwatch Kings not even bothering anymore with the double Widow. They've managed to make it work thus far. They have reached the checkpoint, and Artia finds himself deep in enemy territory as that checkpoint is reached. Okay, so finally some good progress being done. Maybe a little bit of overconfidence out of creation, and they. I guess they showed they didn't need to deal with Linkser to actually pick up those kills and to eventually take the checkpoint, but you sure as hell have to eventually. There's no way you can let this man just get so much free reign over the entire of this map. And Nunlock actually going to play very close up to the enemy team here. Yeah. Creation are going to be taking that high ground and, and denying that, of course, away from Overwatch Kings. That's how it's going to follow here. Nunlock. A little bit of a shocking encounter for him as he goes a little bit low. Is Oxy able to stay at arm's length? But still, Rib does fall down, gets picked up by Artier on the way through, and uh, Numlock does land that nice little charge. To be fair, pretty damn consistent on his Reinhardt charges, I think. One of the players, if you do want to learn, definitely want to be watching as he knows when to go for those charges as well. When at least he's going to have some backup and when he can land it safely. You can see them respecting Linkster, though, because they're actually grouping up behind their tank, Twitty. Make sure they have that shield to protect and to work with. But Bromas on the high ground being damage amped as well. Makes things a little bit more difficult. And Artyr somehow connects onto one. I'm not sure how that happened. He catches just a strangler off. And the Earthshatter will come in on a numb And this will be, again, a clean wipe coming through. You can see how deadly as well the Earthshatter combined with two McCrees. Or even just one in Creation Esports' case is. Just get Artyr to walk over. Press right click a couple times there. And there's just no way you're going to be getting up after you're being knocked down. And Overwatch King's still going to be opting here for that double McCree. Note that move from Bromas, by the way. A quick rocket jump that gets you up on top of the shuttle without having to walk around the corner. Does save you a couple seconds, so good if you're in pressure situations. Meteor is going to meet his death, meet his maker as Linkser did have the vision up to actually spot him coming around the corner. And now uh, Overwatch Kings, they need to come up with a new plan. They need something different to actually deal with this. I, I, they have the Winston, I would say double Winston, or maybe Winston Genji actually could be a good opening from this one. Oh, but trying to use his ultimate, that Deadeye, but quickly gets disposed of. There's an Oxy also quite low now as well. We are going to see the tactical visor being used from Bromas, who up from above is not going to be challenged, not going to be interrupted, and not going to be bothered there as Linkser helps him just make mincemeat of Overwatch Kings there as well. And I think a tenderizer was required, and that's an unlock swinging the hammer. It's all they needed, and Overwatch Kings again have to go for it here. They may well be full held at this second checkpoint. They need to set a time really on this map to have any chance of winning this map in general. That was really interesting exactly, with what Bromas did, and Drakeus did in particular. So Nox used a sound barrier to his team to keep them alive so they wouldn't really need the healing out of Drakeus, and Drakeus just damage boosted Bromas the entirety of that fight. 
Well, now again, challenge up towards the top of this shuttle here as well, but Overwatch Kings have already lost three, and RTS is going to make that even worse. Yes, Twitty's going to fall down as well, and even the poor Lucio of Misha is not going to last long. Overwatch Kings don't have the really ultimates they need, and if they're trying to challenge this high ground, they're still bringing a Reinhardt in here. It's stubborn. They need to change their team composition a little bit more. Jason, you talked about Genji. Could be great here. Maybe even an extra Winston. I don't know why they're, they're oh, persisting no. with Reinhardt for so long when they're trying to get on top oh. of the shuttle. Oh, the monkey somehow body blocked those shots, but Linkster did so much damage. Look at me, team. Adetoni's almost already dead. And look at that. He just gets away from the fight. He just hooks himself out of there, and now Rib's stuck on the ground, looking like a stunned mullet, wondering where the rest of his team is, because, of course, the Reinhardt has to walk with the rest of the team and do this the old-fashioned way. They can't challenge the top of the shuttle at all. It's almost futile at this stage. You know RTR wants to go in here, but Twitty's going to jump around the corner, leaving the rest of his team helpless. Mitra somehow gets a knockback, though. That actually works out relatively well. Oba rejoined the fight, looking for that kill on Dimitri, or on the knock, sorry. We'll eventually pick up the kill, but they've lost out on so many men. Will it be enough? We'll have to see now as well. They need to break this hangar phase in the next one minute and 50 seconds to get a bit of an extension on their time, but Bromas going to be coming in with yet another tactical visor. Gets himself two quick kills, and of course, the Natatonian off. No more heals available to the rest of Overwatch Kings, but of course, he had no res ready. And it's the creation now starting to work into a bit of a rhythm, a bit of a groove. And it's a song they like, no doubt about it. It's just rinse and repeat for them, I feel, at this rate. Now I'm locked. Is he really going to earth shatter from behind? Is he waiting for them to push under him? Oh, this is going to be dirty if it works out. He's actually just trying to listen, trying to hear exactly where they're coming from, trying to not make a single sound. Sounds pretty good. Oh, they're right under him. He hears them coming. He's going to Earthshatter from the back. Watch this. This is going to be huge. The Earthshatter comes in, knocks down four of them. He gets flashbanged up, but it doesn't matter. The rest of the team oh is going to clear this up. That's just so filthy. Numlock is still alive as well. We had the backup of Artier in there and Bromas to boot. I mean, he only really needed one McCree to help him, but hey, why not the whole rest of the team? Stunning stuff there as well. Nothing better than this is Sparta uh, jump down for the Earth Shatter as well. Of course, it doesn't activate until you touch the ground. So same can be said, of course, for Sound Barrier. So you can create some pretty epic moments for yourself in times like that. And this is a creation. Now, they can use a Reinhardt. And I, I know I was getting a bit you know, annoyed at Overwatch Kings for using a Reinhardt here because they need to get him on top of the shuttle, right? It's quite easy for Numlock just to walk and jump up on the boxes here. Overwatch Kings are the one that needs to challenge this position. This might be their chance, though. It's going to be a sound barrier used for creation, but Numlock's gone down early already. Oxy was the one that picked him up, and now Twitty's going to try and get through the doorway with that shield up. But Link's are causing problems from the side. He's going to get Olber as well as he peeks out. That's going to be quite nasty. That's a lot of the damage taken away from uh, the attacking side here now as well. Well, and again, Artie still alive, still doing damage, still making it hurt. Just Mitra, though, on the payload. So if they pick him off, they just have nothing they can do. He's going to get punched in the back. Artie is trying to melee him down. He doesn't even want to shoot him. He wants this kill onto this Lucio. And the flashbang, they will finish it off. No chance of actually taking this into further overtime. And now Creation Esports, all they need to do, cap that third capture point or, or a choke point, and you win. Yeah. That was uh, pretty rough, and I guess uh, yeah, some people are saying it's looking pretty repetitive there because it was just a matter of rinse and repeat there. Creation just had to sit up on top of the rocket ship, just use whatever ultimates they had, and uh, use them to basically belt Overwatch King's face in. Uh, well, like this one, for example, there as well. Artie gets himself two, and of course, finishing off the Winston as he jumps up on high. I was really hoping it would be the numb played play of the game there. With the... The slam, the space jam. That would have been cool, actually. Basically came from space. It was at the highest point it possibly could be at. Dracaeus, 47% kill participation. Our tier 25 uh, kill streak with 30 limbs. That just kind of shows how the game went. They they picked up kills time and time again. They hardly ever got wiped. And if they did, Drew Case was already there, ready to uh, pop his ultimate. So it's simple, right? What we've seen from a lot of teams in the past is that if you are trying to fight against a defensive team on top of the space shuttle, it's really hard, right? No one's saying yep. that that's easy. It is hard to overcome, but you need a challenge for that space. And we're only ever seeing at any time maybe one Winston challenging for that high ground at uh -huh. all from the side of Overwatch Kings. It needs it needs to be more. So now, of course, what I've got up here for you guys as well is that Overwatch Kings, they need to hold the third capture point, which is obviously the end stage of the hangar. If Creation get through the hangar, game over. That's how Overwatch is working because Overwatch Kings didn't actually set a time in failing to attack in general. Creation Esports just need to get further than Overwatch Kings did in whatever time. So really, really tough, uh, a tough ask, I think, for Overwatch Kings with how this game has been going. You think back to Nepal and that was just a whitewash shutout. Um, out of Linkster in particular, playing uh, Mer or that Widowmaker on the high ground. It's going to be a big ask for them. They definitely could pull it off. I don't want to say that they can't, but they have to pull it something really uh, 
really huge out of the team if they want to accomplish that. And not to mention Oxy, he's the man you really have to watch for. Coming in for Icefell, that's yeah. a big a big pair of shoes to fill. And he's gonna be playing the damage role. I mean, he tried Widow against uh, Linkser, but it wasn't necessarily his Widow that made it so they couldn't push. It was just the way his team was playing around his yeah. Widow that made it so they couldn't successfully get anything off that. Yeah, and the reality is, is that when Oxy was trying to, when he actually got to the point of being out of 1v1 Linkser, Links was ready for him. He already had information. He might have had a recon visor or someone already doing some manual recon. For example, Bromas, who was playing that Soldier 76, who was constantly getting up in Oxy's face as well. Now, if you're a Widow and you're looking somewhere else and there's a Soldier 76 come up behind you, you're probably not going to live much longer, not even to, to even know where the damage came from, right? So that was well used. Overwatch Kings might try something similar. They're bringing the Roadhog here for Rib as well. No Winston, but the Roadhog and Reinhardt is going to fill out their tank roster. Let's see what Arteo is going to do here. Nice actual use of the mechanics out of Genji. Charges straight into the entire enemy team, reflecting away as well. He's going to escape with his life. 12 HP, but it doesn't matter. The damage has been done. He's been able to force them back and not allow, allow them to have the initial attack that they wanted. So at least Overwatch King's not actually suffering any casualties here as well. They give ground, I guess, willingly enough here, knowing that they, the real fight's going to be happening over this point. And they set up inside the server room, which had they've identified is definitely a hotspot for attacking teams. They go into that room first, and they try and access the rest of the map from there. However, Overwatch King's not really sure if they want to stay here, because we can see Creation might even just work their way around the side, just keep a Lucio or something similar on the payload. But here comes a fight. Overwatch Kings are coming forward. And Archer's coming in for the back. That's the first kill on Oxy. Nice easy right click on that. He's going to dash straight through the Dragon Blade. He's going to come through. He's looking to slice and dice. He gets one. He gets two. He's looking for the third with the dash yet again. The revive's oh. going to come through. Eventually, he'll be picked off. But that's going to be the entire enemy team going to be wiped out. Yeah, Olber actually managed to avoid getting picked off. Gets a bit of Mick right click action going. <laughs> but unfortunately, it's going to require a couple more teammates to help hold on here. So this should be Creation getting that second checkpoint. That means there's one more checkpoint to go. If Creation get through the hangar, if they get to that final door, it will be GG. Yeah. Oh, actually, no. Is if they if they do it in a quicker time? No. No. Okay. Um. No. I mean, I, you, yeah. So again, due to the rules, it's just the way it's set up. You don't have the ability to actually time everything in, an, in a bracket with 368 teams. But either way, they're gonna keep trying. Links are just sitting by the payload himself with the Widowmaker doing some work. And uh, Rib oh, so on the Hanzo. He's trying to do something about this. The scatter shots just aren't connecting. Yeah, he's actually had to drop down as well there as well. A little bit intimidated by Lynx's presence up above, and I don't really blame him too much there. But Bromas is also there. Gets himself a pulse bomb double kill, but Rib is actually able to shut him down. However, that's not really the main threat of creation being dealt with here. They're still running with four. Nox is playing D.Va, by the way, for those that were asking when we were going to see it. Maybe this is a little, more, a little bit less serious situation for creation, but Diva's still very, very good, of course, at being able to access those higher parts of the map, just like this, getting in the face of that McCree as well, blocking the initial damage as well, and just trying to trade back. Now going to be self-destructing here. I'm not going to get anyone, yeah, though, say, as well. I'm not even going to bother. There's just no way he's going to kill someone with that one. But area of denial is fine. It can buy a little bit of extra time for an attacking side, Jason, I guess, if he can force the defenders away from crucial vantage points. And he got his suit back anyway, so Linkser now needs to click a few more heads before creation can get to the end of this game. I was gonna say, actually, the payload is relatively close. It's around the corner um, from actually finishing, and Arteo is gonna be going with the Dragon Blade yet again. He gets knocked down though as well, so interrupted halfway through and charged up against the wall. And Twitty definitely focusing him out as an important target to deal with early on, but unfortunately, that's gonna come back to bite him because Nox is still on his feet as well. He gets the Bunny Blaster action in going as well. Links are pressing forward. They're very close. It's a 0.92 meters from the end of this game, the end of this series, and the end of this tournament, and they've done it. You better believe it. Creation Esports are the winner of our very first Go For Overwatch tournament. We'll be seeing them in the monthly finals, no doubt about it. Hey, not to mention, it's not just about um, you know, securing first place, it's about the points you accumulate for playing because you get edged into the monthly finals, you're going to be playing for 900 euros. First place takes home 600, second takes home 300.